Beware, ye lily-livered land lovers! These waters be infested with sharks. Up it goes <laughs> nice, and welcome back to more Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. And today, I am very excited to be showcasing a deck that I've been practicing quite a bit in the background. Today, we are finally getting our hands on the shark deck. Now, if you've never played sharks, it's a pretty simple deck. It is a water attribute focused deck that wants to spam out as many level 4, 5, and occasionally 3 monsters to rank up into really powerful water-based XYZ monsters. Monsters like Bahamut Shark, like Silent Honor Arc, like Nash Knight, or even like Stealth Kraken, one of the most well-known grind cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because we're an XYZ deck, we also get access to Zeus, which is a very powerful card that everybody loves. And also, because we're really good at spamming out rank 4s, we can get stuff like Dugaris, which has a ton of flexibility in the deck. The main reason I got interested in Sharks is because of the armored XYZ cards that were released a selection pack or two ago. Because interestingly enough, all of the XYZ armor monsters, which would be Torpedo and Fortress and the Dark Knight Lancer are all water monsters. So they go with sharks absolutely perfectly. And with stuff like Silent Honor Arc and Nash Knight, you have a lot of ways of getting rid of your opponent's cards without banishing them or destroying them. And that can lead to some really, really powerful setups and really awesome ways to control your opponent just so you can just crush them out of existence. It's really hard to describe what kind of combo lines you can get into with sharks because what I will say about the deck is that the main reason I have so much fun with it is that it's an incredibly flexible deck. There's a variety of ways you can get into your big XYZ monsters with starcher lines, which can do all sorts of nonsense. All I will say is that this is one of my favorite decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! currently, and I highly recommend trying it out for yourself. It is super flexible and super fun. And you know what? To showcase just how powerful this deck can be, let's go ahead and get into some games. All right, getting into our first game here with the Sharks. We have a pretty interesting opener here. We're gonna go ahead and start with the Ten Yi Spirit. Go ahead and special summon it. Then we're gonna use Lantern Shark to special summon our Buzzsaw Shark. We're just gonna special summon Lifeless Leaf Fish. We're just gonna get us straight into Bahamut Shark. It's time to Bahamut Blast all over our opponent. We're gonna go ahead and ditch that so we can grab the XYZ Armor Torpedo. We can start that lineup on our next turn. Then we're gonna go to Dugatas here, which is a pretty nice thing we can do here. Because I really just have so many summons at this rate, I'm like, forget it. I'm gonna go ahead and draw two. I can use Leafless Life Fish on my next turn to go ahead and draw a card. So we're gonna go ahead and summon Dugatis. And after Bahamut summon Armor Torpedo, we're gonna use the Armor Torpedo to go into the rest of the XYZ Armor line. Meaning we're gonna go into Armor Fortress. We're gonna use Armor Fortress to ditch the Armor Torpedo into the graveyard to grab the Armored XYZ. So that way, we can XYZ on my opponent's turn and give ourselves protection and a scoop on our opponent's turn. And the other forms of uh, control we have are Infinite and Permanent and Called by the Grave. So I feel pretty confident going into my opponent's turn. As soon as they draw, we're going to activate the full armored XYZ. And my opponent is going to play Speedroid Wheel. Now, I haven't played the Speedroid matchup too many times. So I'm not quite sure what I'm getting myself into. They're going to go ahead and ditch Din Din. I see it has a graveyard effect. I'm going to go ahead and just call it by it because I don't want them to have access to it at all. I do not want them to have a bunch of recursion. Again, I don't know the speed board matchup that well. This is probably the wrong thing to do, but hey, it's fine. My opponent is going to get another Den Den from their deck with speed board wheel. We're going to go ahead and go into our Dark Knight Lancer. And we have our scoop set up if we need it. Our opponent is going to use the speed board scratch, which I believe is the best speed board card. They are going to ditch the Try Eye Dice to grab the Double Yo Yo. They're going to go ahead and summon the Take Tombor, which I still don't know what the hell that thing's supposed to be. Summon the do Double Yo Yo with their Take Tombor, which is going to resummon their Try Eye Dice, which is going to get them into. A Excuse me? Uh, Time Lords have a Synchro? Well, I see this in I immediately, immediately, without a second of thought, go ahead and use my trap from the graveyard. Use Dark Knight Lancer to go ahead and grab the armor torpedo, giving it even more protections and some more stats. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and scoop up that Time Lord, making my Dark Knight Lancer even bigger. 
our opponent is just going to play a pendulum monster our draw phase gets skipped we don't really care we're going to go ahead and summon life leave the lifeless leaf fish ditch the crystal shark to bring back crystal shark and from there we're going to summon the silent honor arc and i'm going to go ahead and the main reason i summoned silent honor arc is because i was trying to scoop up their monster because I thought Silent Honor Arc, much like Dark Knight Lancer, could just scoop up a monster, but they can only scoop up special summoned monsters. And, oh, special summoned monsters in face of attack position. So I could not scoop this Den Den. I just misread Silent Honor Arc. It's okay. We're going to use Dagara to get rid of their mon to go ahead and do some damage. But it doesn't matter that we couldn't scoop up their monster because we have just enough damage to kill our opponent anyways. Because Dark Knight Lancer is awesome. And that is an excellent example of just how powerful sharks can be. Getting into our next game here, we're going to be playing some more sharks into our opponent's mystery deck. Go ahead and activate Fool's Burial. Pretty powerful card in this situation. I will try to bait out Ash. I'm going to go ahead and throw away the Lifeless Leaf Fish because the card you want to throw away, throw away with Foolish is the Crystal Shark. Going to go ahead and use the 10 U Spirit. Going to go ahead and ditch that. Special summon the Crystal Shark. Try to get some materials, maybe for Remora to activate. I'm gonna go ahead and just summon the Dugaris. I could not go into Bahamut because I don't think Crystal Shark lets you... Um... Yeah, it has to be a number XYZ monster for it to be treated as a rank 4. So we're gonna go ahead and go into Dugaris, ditch both of our cards. Which is, is a really fun fact about um, Crystal Shark. If you use its ability to special summon itself, the next time I would go to the graveyard, it, sh or it would be banished instead, but because we detached it as material from a monster, you can actually put it back into the graveyard and keep reusing it for special summons if you can keep using it as material, which is the main reason I went to Dugaris out of all my monsters. I could just use it to draw cards. My opponent is going to infinite and permanent to start Dugaris. Again, we don't care. We got what we wanted out of this, which is to put Crystal Shark back in the graveyard. And from here, we're going to use Dugaris to go ahead and go into our Armor Fortress. Which is going to go ahead and get us into the rest of the Armored XYZ line. Putting Dugaris in the graveyard, putting Full Armor back on the board. And then we're going to go ahead and slam down a Ice Barrier on their draw step. We're going to activate the Full Armored XYZ, like we typically do, to go into the Dark Knight Lancer. Very, very interesting board we've got here. My opponent is going to Dragon Shrine here, showing me that they are blue eyes. And I'm like, oh, okay. I <laughs> I happen to play a lot of blue eyes. I'm not quite sure why. They're gonna go ahead and use Return of the Dragon Lords to bring back their Dragon Spirit of White, which is going to banish my Ice Barrier, which actually is a huge hindrance for me. They're gonna go ahead and trade in into the Lord of D. Lord of D is gonna come down, make my life miserable going to go ahead and bring back a blue eyes white dragon my opponent is going to link off their dragon spirit of white and their egg they summon the heretic seal and from here i'm like okay i can't have this going into my turn they're gonna bounce back dark knight lancer i have to go ahead and use full armored xyz on this heretic seal so i'm gonna go ahead and scoop that card right up we got a nice big powerful Dark Knight Lancer, they're going to special summon the Abyss Dragon, they're going to go ahead and get back their Chaos form, which makes me think they're going to go ahead and go into uh, Chaos Max next turn, but they're going to go ahead and grab the Jet Dragon, which is a bit of a problem because that card is rather annoying. Unfortunately, I have a really weird hand, so I'm going to go ahead and use 10 U Spirit to go ahead and bring back the Crystal Shark, you've seen this line before. And from here, I'm like, okay, there's not much I can really do here. I'm going to go with good and go into Silent Honor Arc, we're going to go ahead and Attach the Lord of D, my opponent is going to infinite impermanence here, which is absolutely brutal. There's just not much I can do in response to that. So, they're going to go ahead and negate my honor arc, and I'm like, cool, well I can't really do anything in response to that. I'm going to go ahead and use Dark Knight Lancer to attack their monster. They're going to use Lord of D to redirect the Dark Knight Lancer into the Abyss Dragon. From here I'm like, cool, I got an XYZ monster to attack, I'm just going to summon Zeus. This is the best thing I can do, just try, just to try to clear their board. My opponent is going to go ahead and activate the Dictator of D again. Special summoning another Blue Eyes. And from here, they're going to go ahead and summon the Blue Eyes Twin Burst Dragon. And from here, my opponent summons even more nonsense. They're getting another Blue Eyes back to their hand. And I believe now that I see the Twin Burst, I'm like, I... I can't deal with this. 
I have to go ahead and wipe this board. They're going to get rid of my monsters anyways. So the Zeus is going to activate. It's going to end their turn. It's going to let us start our turn. We're going to go ahead and use Lifeless Leaf Fish. They're going to max C us because, of course, max C is going to be involved in this game. Why wouldn't it be a totally fair and balanced card? We're going to go ahead and ditch the Crystal Shark because of max C. What I really want to do here is I want to use Lifeless Leaf Fish with Crystal Shark to go ahead and summon another XYZ monster to develop a little bit more control over the board because of Max C, I really, really don't want my opponent drawing cards. So I have to play the Max C game. Do I special summon a bunch of monsters and let them draw a bunch of cards and have a bunch of resources? Or do I just stop where I am and hope I have enough to stop my opponent in the middle of their tracks? And I decide in this moment that I'm just not gonna play through Max C. I'm gonna take my damage in they don't have that many resources. They do have a Jet Dragon they could use, and of course they draw into Bingo Machine Go, which is an incredibly powerful card. So Maxi's stopped me from doing anything, or being able to put anything on my board that could deal with this. My opponent is going to White Dragon Fusion, or whatever Ultimate Fusion, my mistake, into Blue Eyes Tyrant Dragon. Blue Eyes Tyrant Dragon destroys Zeus, and Blue Eyes Tyrant Dragon lets them set any trap, including infinite impermanence. From this position, there's not a lot I can do. And their Tyrant Dragon gets to swing again, because why not? So my opponent has a monster that is unaffected by traps, can attack all monsters my opponent uh, I control once each. And um, if I try to destroy their cards by battle or card effect, I think this just says, no, you can't do that. Oh no, other cards you control can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. So I can't destroy their cards and they, and they can negate something I do automatically. I'm gonna go ahead and use infinite permanence to negate the jet dragon so I can have a little bit of something I can do. I'm gonna go ahead and use leaf fish to try and draw something. Putting back all of that, drawing into the Abyss Shark, which is pretty good. I can go ahead and use that to, some the, to get the Remora. We're going to go ahead and use Crystal Shark. We're going to try to set up something we can do here. I do have two rank fives. From here, I'm going to try and summon the Nash Knight. The entire idea here is that I'm trying to bait that Imperm now so I can try to grab that Tyrant Dragon and turn things around. So they're going to go ahead and imperm the Nash Knight. There's nothing that I, I can do about that. So I'm like, okay, well, what can I do here? We're going to summon the CXYZ Nash Knight. Now, from here, I could just kind of chill out. Maybe get some defense going on. Uh, I could detach and try to summon any monster from my deck. And I look at that and I'm like, oh, cool. I can use this to grab any... Um, I can use this to go into like a level 4 monster. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well if I do this, then I can go into, I believe, Stealth Dragon is the one that I want it to be. Because I can use this and I can destroy the Tyrant Dragon. And if they attack into Stealth Dragon, I can just go ahead and get another monster. Which is the main idea of this play. This thing's gonna get destroyed. I'm gonna summon the um the Swan, which can let me grab the Stealth Dragon back. So I can pop their jet dragon and maybe close the game out from here. But um Yeah. That's my that's that that's my line of thought going into this, thinking I can summon Stealth Kraken. But you'll notice with Nash Knight, it says 101 to 107. Meaning I can't summon Stealth Kraken and win this game. With that, there's not much else I can summon. I could have just tried to sit on the board with Nash Knight and hoped it was enough, but it probably wasn't. And I wanted to showcase this game as, as a bit of a statement. I don't think my opponent won that game. I think, even though I made a mistake with Nash Knight, 
even though I tried to play around the imperm and all the stuff they had. I lost the game because of Max C. And I know a lot of people sit there and say, Max C is for the combo decks. Max C is to keep all the really powerful meta decks in check. Sharks aren't meta. They just summon XYZ monsters. So why is this card allowed in this game? I mean, it's supposed to stop the meta decks, but what it winds up doing is it takes the rogue decks that could interact and could have an interesting comeback and just completely shuts them down. Because it's either you give your opponent a bunch of cards of resources and they win the game, or you don't play anything and your opponent wins the game. It's a losing battle no matter what you do. So yeah, I lost to Blue Eyes because of Maxi. Nothing else I can really say about that. Alright, getting into our next game here. Let's try to kick things back up on a positive note. We got a pretty interesting hand here. We've got Effect Failure, which is pretty nice control. Foolish Burial, which can set up some really fun nonsense. We go ahead and try to Foolish Burial to try to bait out an Ash or something. And of course, my opponent plays Max C. And I'm like, awesome. I can't do anything now. So because of Max C, yet again... I am not allowed to extend and play all of my big crazy shark monsters because this stupid bug will just draw them a million cards. So I'm just going to go ahead and set Silent Angler. There's not much I can do. My opponent's sports of her feeling lights me because why wouldn't they? <laughs> They're going to set two and pass, which is it's it's not the worst thing that can happen because of sorts of because of Swords of Revealing Light, I can't really answer that, so I'm just going to go ahead and set the other 10 Ye Spirit and pass, try to stall out the Swords as much as possible. My opponent is then going to summon the Photon Sanctuary, at least play as Photon Sanctuary, to summon some tokens. From here, my opponent is going to go into the Galaxy Eyes Soul Flare Dragon, which is a card I've never seen until this game. Which is a, it's a pretty scary card that allows them to destroy my special summon monsters. But more importantly, it's a Galaxy Eyes monster, so they can use their Photon Stream of Destruction to target any card on the board and banish it, which is pretty terrifying, allowing them to break my defensive board. And I'm going to go into my turn, and I'm like, okay, well, if they have a Galaxy monster, I can't do anything. I'm just going to go ahead and activate Buzzsaw Shark, try to do some nonsense here. My opponent is going to imperp my Buzzsaw Shark so I can't extend into more XYZ monsters. I'm like, you know what, dude? That's fine. We're going to get Crystal Shark. I'm going to go ahead and activate Buzzsaw Shark and Crystal Shark to go ahead and grab the Silent Honor Arc. And I'm going to go ahead and summon the Crystal Shark or the Abyss Shark here to grab a uh, Buzzsaw Shark back to my board. Um, I was going to Silent Honor Arc, but I was afraid of them using their card to banish my monster. So I just kind of sat there for a minute, and I'm like, cool, whatever. I'll just let them attack into Abyss Shark. I didn't really think that through, because I was afraid that they had a card that would that they could discard to banish my Silent Honor Arc, and then I've just got really nothing going on. But I do have Buzzsaw Shark and XYZ Remora, which are two very powerful monsters. I'm going to go and use Buzzsaw Shark to grab another XYZ Remora from the deck. Use Remora. So grab Bahamut Shark, and this is where things get interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Bahamut Shark. We're gonna go ahead and do the entire R XYZ armor line. And we're gonna go ahead and sub the armor fortress again. But we're gonna do something a little bit different. Typically you grab the trap with this, but because it's on my turn, and there's an opponent I can scoop up off my opponent, or there's a monster on my opponent's board I can scoop up. I'm gonna grab the spell. And from here, I'm gonna go from XYZ armor fortress straight into the Dark Knight Lancer. And then we're gonna use Armored XYZ to go ahead and put the Torpedo onto the Lancer. Which is going to allow us to equip their Soul Flare Dragon. So if they have anything they could do with their uh, Banish, now would be the time to do it. But my opponent doesn't. My opponent, seeing the writing on the wall, scoops it up. And that is why Galaxy is not nearly as good as Shark. Right, let's go back into our next game here, which is going to be an instant rematch with the exact same opponent we just played. That's right, we're going right back into the Galaxy match with our Sharks. We're going first this time, though, Lantern Sharks are going to go ahead and sub the XYZ Reborn from hand. We're going to try to use Foolish Burial Goods to bait out something. My opponent is going to Ash Blossom, which is absolutely fantastic. Foolish Burial Goods is pretty much just Ash Bait. Because now from here, 
I can go into Bahamut Shark, which is going to help me set up my XYZ armor board. We've seen this before. We're going to go ahead and speed through this real quick. Armor torpedo into the fortress, into the trap. We're going to set a call by and the trap and end our turn. Bahamut Shark, I absolutely love you. On my opponent's turn, we're going to use the trap. Go into our Dark Knight Lancer. Boom, Shakalaksa. All right, Galaxy, what you got for Bahamut Shark and the Dark Knight Lancer? We're going to go ahead and Harpy's Feather Duster. Get rid of my Called by the Grave. Not the worst thing that could happen. They traded one for one. I'm not too worried. My opponent is going to Dark Hole here, though. And in response, I'm going to go ahead and use the Armored XYZ to just grab my Armor Torpedo to defend my Dark Knight Lancer so I have something after this Dark Hole. We're going to lose Bahamut Shark and the Armor Torpedo. My opponent does not have anything else, though, so they're going to set a card and pass. Dark Knight Lancer's got some nonsense it can do, but I don't really have anything else I can do. Now, Lightning Storm I can't activate, and Ash Blossom is a control piece, but I do discover something very funny with Dark Knight Lancer. It allows you to take any XYZ card in your graveyard and add it to your hand, and wouldn't you know it, XYZ Remora is an XYZ card, so we're going to go ahead and put it back in our hand and resummon it, and just get in for 39. <laughs> From here, though... I'm going to go ahead and use the Dark Knight Lancer to just go into Zeus, which is a very powerful card. My opponent decides to do literally anything, I can just clear their board. And then hopefully I'll draw a shark that has enough attack that we can go ahead and knock our opponent out of here. My opponent is going to special summon the Galaxy Soldier, which allows them to grab something from their deck to their hand. We're going to go ahead and ash that. I do not want them extending their plays any more than they're already about to. From there, my opponent is going to activate Galaxy Expedition which is incredibly good with Galaxy Soldier, allowing them to special summon a Galaxy Eyes Afterglow Dragon. And from here, I'm like, nope, I don't I don't know what this does. We're just gonna get rid of all this nonsense. And apparently that's just enough. Even though I don't know what your card does, uh, getting rid of it is enough to make my opponent rage quit. And with that out of the way, Galaxy takes the 0-2 loss to Sharks, cause Sharks are incredible. Let's get back into our next game here after some Pretty funny rematches. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a pretty interesting hand here. We've got the Tendy Spirit. We're gonna go ahead and use that to go ahead and get one of our free monsters off. We're gonna go ahead and use Buzzsaw Shark, and our opponent is going to answer Buzzsaw Shark with Ash Blossom, which hurts, but it's not the worst thing ever. This does technically bait out the Ash, so I can go into Bahamut Shark, which is what I believe we're gonna go ahead and do. Darn right we are, Bahamut Shark. Go ahead and Bahamut Blast all over my face and my opponent to summon the Armor Torpedo. And you, you've seen this line. You know what we're about to do. Armor Fortress, into the trap, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen this a million times from this deck. Anyways, we're gonna set the trap to pass. We've got an effect, Valor and an Ash Blossom to deal with our opponent's nonsense, and a Lightning Storm I can't really use. I'm gonna go ahead and activate, yep, the trap. You know what we're doing, Dark Knight Lancer. It's back. Our opponent is going to summon Son of a bitch. Blue Eyes is back. My opponent is going to discard Jet Dragon to summon Jet Dragon. And I'm like, you know what? No, you don't get that. I know what that card does. Dark Knight Lancer, give me that Jet Dragon. You don't need that nonsense. Get the hell out of here, Blue Eyes. You're not getting lucky twice with me. I know you don't know no maxi. You can't deal with this nonsense. Get out of here. Dark Knight Lancer's had enough of your nonsense. All right, folks. We've messed around with sharks long enough. Let's get into a real game with a very real hand. Double effect, failure, lightning storm, ash, and a ready fusion. Ready fusion does get us into a level four, so I'm not going to complain too much. My opponent is going to start with dark beckoning beasts, and I'm like, you know what? I don't... I, 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 I do not want to deal with uh, Phantom Beast. I'm going to go ahead and Ash Blossom that. You do not need more cards from your deck. Get out of here with that nonsense. My opponent is going to immediately end their turn, and I'm like, okay, I can draw a shark, right? Nope. <laughs> draw an Ice Barrier. So I'm going to set an Effect Veiler and pass just to defend my life points and do something. My opponent is going to activate Spirit Charmers. Now I know what you're thinking. Weren't they playing Phantom Beast? Yeah, that's what I thought too, but now they're on Charmers. They're going to discard Familiar Possessed Wind, grab Awakening of the Possessed, set their Possessed Partnerships, which I have never seen as a card, but I do really want to play uh, the Spirit Charmer deck. So I I'm excited to see this. Awakening of the Possessed is going to 
boost all their monsters attack for each attribute they control i'm gonna go ahead just i'm gonna affect valor luna i do not want them digging through their deck to get more of their spell casters i don't know why in the world they have this i've never seen this card until now so i'm like nope i'm good just no thank you we're gonna add a card to their hand they're gonna go ahead and resummon the dark beckoning beast which gets them their gate which can let them do phantom nonsense stuff or opening of the spirit gate my bad which lets them get a Another Dark Beckoning Beast? Okay. I'm confused. What? What? Excuse me? Five minutes ago, we were on Phantom Beast. Then we're on Charmers. Now we're on Sprite? Okay. Um, Apprentice, but Illusion Magician. Yup. We've been from Phantom Beasts to Charmers to Sprite, back to back to Charmers. My opponent is going to use the gigantic Sprite to special summon Evil Hero Infernal Prodigy. Dark Beckoning Beast again with Luna. Link off into Line of the Light Charmer. You know, makes perfect sense, why not? Linking off Prodigy and Gigantic Sprite for Masquerina. Uh-huh. Yeah. Perfect sense. So I'm going to go ahead and just Ice Barrier Masquerina. Permanently getting rid of its ability and making it have zero attack and defense. Lion is going to attack into our effect, Valor, and we're going to take 2600 from the Apprentice Illusion Magician. My opponent has quite a few different attributes. Is it in... No, it's new control, so they just get 600. Which is still a pretty nice attack buff. We're going to go ahead and grab the Crystal Shark back to our deck. We're going to play the Lightning Vortex. I'm going to get rid of all their monsters, just because there's a lot of nonsense going on here. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm not reading all the cards on the board, so I'm going to go ahead and destroy everything. Just kidding, Linus stays around, because Awakening of Zest is a card that's on the board. And uh, their Charmer and Familiar Possessed monsters can't be destroyed by card effects. And guess what? Line of the Light Charmer, Lustrous, is a Charmer. So Lightning Vortex was a dumb card to play. I should have gotten rid of the back row. It's okay, I'm going to go ahead and Red Fusion into the Rare Fish. Getting to showcase this tech, summoning the Lantern Shark, they're going to go ahead and play Possessed Partnerships, which resummons their win and destroys my rare fish. And I'm like, uh, okay, that sucks. Crystal Shark into the lan Lantern Shark. Nash Knight. So if I'm here, I'm like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ditch both my cards so I can use Crystal Shark again later. We're going to equip a different card from the deck. We're going to, I believe, get the Ragna Zero. Go ahead and scoop up the lineup. Summon ourselves a full armored Crystal Zero Lancer. My opponent just sees this, and they're like, you know what? You got it. You stopped my Charmer nonsense. Uh, GG. And uh, that is how we beat uh, whatever the hell I just played. Let's find out what that deck was before we get to the end card, shall we? So, uh, you, you ready for this? Because cause I certainly wasn't ready for this when I, when I looked at my opponent's deck afterwards. Here we go! That's right, folks. They're playing Promethean Princess, uh, Ambla Whale. SP Little Knight makes sense. Muckraker makes no sense. Um, Cranguinol and Lulawalith because they're also on Cortesia. Oh, and they've got Yubel, too. And Silent Magician. So, oh, and right, Gekki Break, because why not in 2024? Yeah, I don't know what my opponent's cooking, but uh, I'd love to be in their kitchen, because this is... This this is quite the recipe. So, yeah, let's... Let's go to then and guard now that we've seen this. All right, Bahabak Shark, go ahead and calm down. The Blood Frenzy's over. You did it. You showcased just how powerful sharks can be and how awesome your combo lines are. Go ahead and go drink some Bahamut Blast and go go take a nap, buddy, okay? You did wonderful. And with those games out of the way, that is going to conclude our showcase of just what you can do with sharks, especially the armored XYZ version of sharks. This is a deck that I've been super excited to be playing on camera because I really, really do love this deck, and I do believe in the power of sharks. I may not be the best pilot for the deck. I've seen some other people who are much better with this deck do have much more success and get to stuff like Master, but I just 
I love the deck. I think the sharks is super interesting. And again, the flexibility of the ways of special summon monsters to get into your big XYZ monsters is fascinating to me. And I'd love to see this deck perfected because I don't think that this is the best shark deck, but I do definitely think it can hang with a lot of the more powerful meta decks out there. And again, I, I really think you should give it a try yourself. This is a really fun deck. There's not that many slots it takes up so you can easily slot on stuff like hand traps and imperms and other interesting and weird tech cards if you feel like it anyways that's going to conclude our video for the day folks thank you for tuning in i hope you enjoyed watching sharks as much as i enjoyed playing it without further ado i have been the ghost with knife now folks do me a big favor and just get the hell out of here <laughs>